Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Edu Enka, and I'm here with Dr. Lavon Chadwell Brule. She's an acting deputy chief education officer in the Ministry of Education and Culture, and teacher Jomin Scatliff. She's a technical education consultant in the Ministry of Education and Culture, and we're talking about new introductions into the curriculum in the secondary education process, as well as the development of the technical and vocational high school that's coming on stream. I just got a text, and I'm sort of going to interpret and paraphrase, but it seems to me like what is being asked is, how are the students going to know that they want to be into plumbing or electrical engine, uh, uh, electrician? Or how are they going to know what vocation they want to be in? Is this something that they're going to have an opportunity to test out? Are they going to be stared by a counselor or a teacher? How will that be determined? I think it's a good, it's a good question. Well, career counseling is going to be provided because in most schools we have counselors and they will direct the students as to their interests, as to what career path they would like to go. And based on that, you know, a decision would be made whether they would prefer to do plumbing as opposed to woodwork, as opposed to f um, food preparation or cosmetology, cosmetology yes. whatever, you know, the case may be. So. It's based on the students' feeling, what they want to see themselves in the years down the line. You know, whether they want to be a teacher, they want to be a chef, they want to be in construction. They will be the ones to decide based on <coughs> what they would like to do. With some guidance from the, from the career counselor. From the career yeah. counselor. Right. And, and, and if they make that request, then they would be put into the, 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 the technical vocational Once they meet the requirements. Once they meet the requirements. Right. And that requirements would mean a sound academic footing of the of the, of the thought form. Right. Okay. The same way it's done right now. What do you mean the same way it's done right now? At third form, the same process that the students go through will be oh, the same the process, process that we will okay. use. But that what that has not been the case with the with the Barbers Bay School. No, it's a whole new it's revolution. A, it's a, it's okay. <laughs> All right. So we want to talk about we want to talk about the enhancements that's coming to the the, the technical vocational institute in Barbers Bay. So it's kind of the Barbers Bay School. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we want to talk about structural enhancement. What you're going to do to the structure because the last time I was there some of the students were, didn't feel that they were being challenged enough. They were doing small engine repair, and those guys were itching to get behind, get under the engine of some cars and trucks and stuff, and they were saying, listen, and this stuff is boring. We want to get down to the real mechanic stuff. You know? First, let me say that um, renovation is going to start soon at the <coughs> campus in Bogus Bay. We are presently um, we want to transfer the students and all the equipment down to the cultural center as a temporary um, home. And as soon as we are finished with that, um, renovations are going to start at the Bogus Bay campus, which is going to be the envy of all secondary schools, I must say. We are hoping it would be. Um, with small engine repair, we are stepping it up a bit. We are going to involve auto mechanic maintenance. So it's not just going to be small engine repair, but we are adding a few other, you know, areas of auto mechanics onto it. And we are going to do likewise in some of the other um, subject areas. We are going to enhance them by, for example, right now at Bogus Bay School, they only do um, garment construction, which we know as clothing and textile. And we want to introduce the full program of home economics. We want to bring in home management, we want to bring in food preparation, okay? And the way we want to look at um, clothing and textile is not in the old-fashioned way, but more like costume design or anything in Close design. design. Clothes yeah, yeah. design. So Make it from design, from design, from design more, to construction. Right, more attractive to the students mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're talking about build, uh, in, improving the campus itself, the right. building structure. You want to make it more bigger, more roomy, more spacious, more equipment. More conducive to learning, mm -hmm. 
more a school atmosphere because presently it's not really structured in a school atmosphere situation and we are hoping with the renovation that is going to take place shortly that um, every child going at that institution would feel comfortable, would feel even more comfortable than attending the Elmo Stout High School or Brigada Flax <coughs> or the Claudia Cricky. Everyone would be um, competing to go up there. And we're not, we, we're not going to, we're no longer putting students in there that have not, have not made the grade because that was what we were doing in the past. Because I, I have a, a question here along those lines. Uh, good night, what will be done about the students who are 14 plus who are still in primary, in the primary school system? We are still working on, on, on the logistics with that. And as soon as we are finished fine tuning exactly what program we are going to design for those students, we are going to bring it to the, the public. And let me say that um, the opportunity is going to come whereby we are going to involve all stakeholders in whatever decision making we are going to um, bring forward. Um, we are still in the planning stage and that's why we haven't really said much about the um, the reform of that particular school, but as soon as we are ready for that, all those public meetings would be held. Okay, and uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier that, in, in, in relationship to this question, that you're, you're planning early interventions in the primary school to 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 see the progress of those students mm -hmm. to make sure that they are getting the education that they need to move into secondary school and not have to be in uh, class one and uh, class two and class three and at 14, 14 at 14 sorry. plus years of age. That's, that's, the that's vision is to make sure that early intervention occurs <laughs> as early as stage one. We are hoping that um, the ministry, <laughs> the, the, the department, would put the necessary um, personnel in place so that we can have early intervention and um, remedy the deficiencies, the academic um, challenges of our weaker students and bring them up to speed. Now this might not be in your current purview <coughs> part of your terms of reference, but I know that you know as a teacher that for years now the sociologists and those persons in education, the cutting edge of education have been talking about from birth to five, six, seven years old as being the formative years of the human being. And and I know you must realize that there needs to be a process in place from very, very early to help to prevent the necessity of in early intervention and so on. Is that something that you're planning to recommend? Is that something you're looking at from your perspective, from, from your terms of reference? Yes. Definitely. And because if, if there is early intervention, there will be no need for the school that presently exists. <coughs> because once there is remediation at the earliest stage, we expect all our students to be successful in moving from primary to secondary, from secondary to tertiary, and it goes on. So we ain't looking at no more done situation. No, <laughs> we don't have those <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to have them no more. <laughs> okay, anyway, those children. We, we guarantee that the children have an opportunity to have a good education right, cool. and whatever their challenges are, we are looking to mitigate, to mitigate right. those challenges at a very early stage in their development. Right, correct. Okay, cool. Uh, we falling under the tyranny of the clock, I think. <coughs> see if there's any more, any more text. Yes, we use this. Anything that uh, I've, I neglected to ask your teacher, Joe, I mean, there's so, many, there's so many things going on. So we, we put in an end to the two-tier system. There's no more academically inclined and vocationally inclined. And we have expectations that our students going into the workplace or they going into higher, into tertiary level education. How long is that transition going to take in, in, in terms of the development of the infrastructure and the human resource and equipment development in the, the, the technical education, vocational, technical education, vocational institute in, in Bargas Bay. How long are they going to have to stay in the cultural center? And what, what you expect the time well, of completion? Um, we don't foresee more than two months. Two months? We are hoping that within two months, with um, energetic 
contractors <laughs> that we can achieve the goal and um, have our students back in their new home within two months. We are hoping. That's and uh, praying. <laughs> that's a thought. That's a thought. Yeah. That's a thought. Oh, wow. yeah, okay. so don't make up, man. If a child repeat primary five at the age of 15, where is that child going when school reopens in September? The minister has already um, announced that um, students who were unsuccessful at the primary five or who are 14 years and older will remain in their present schools and remediation will take place in their prospective schools to ensure that they are competent for moving on. So you, you, they got, they're going to get the help they need to pass the primary five exam. Right. You're not putting them in the in no other school until no. they pass the primary five right. exam. So the days of students coming out of primary school and going into a secondary institution, whether it's whether it's Elmore Stout or the the technical vocational school, is for right now gone gone forever. I'm, uh, I should not say gone forever because we're still in the planning stage, um, Cromwell, mm -hmm. and um, whatever it, it takes for us to do to ensure that all of our students are educated, whether they are 15 years and not competent um, for secondary education, or what, we still have to make sure that there are programs that we can have for those students, provide for those students to ensure that they can be um, employable self-sustainable and um, functional. So Have a I, quality of life. Yes, yes. <coughs> Anything I didn't ask you, you want uh, to say before we go? I basically covered everything. Um, everything covered? Everything was covered, yeah. yes. Okay, cool. I, I want to thank you uh, both and of course thank uh, Ad for you for coming on Spotlight and sharing which turned out to be a wealth of information. So a lot going on, and I'm really glad that y'all took this opportunity to come and, and inform us about the new programs. The, I think you got a theme for it. What's it? Um, a new a new level? Because some of them see there was there was something. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had. There seemed to be a, 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 um, the the the. Information officer had a, a, a name for it. Oh, Move into okay. another level or uh, some some such slogan. I, and I shouldn't have raised it if I didn't remember. But I'm glad to have you. And uh, thanks very much for coming and sharing information with us. Pleasure was it? It was my pleasure. Yes. <laughs> next week, next week, the spotlight will shine on Father Branch pastor of St. George's Anglican Church. We'll be discussing the various facets of his tenure here in the BVI, uh, the role of the church in the community, and what more the church as a body can do to have a greater positive impact in the country. So I'm sure you'll, be want, to, you'll, be, you'll want to be a part of the discussion, so don't miss it. I want you to also remember that's coming up on the, I have to give this plug for the, for the, B, the, the BVI Motorsports Association, uh, the 26th, uh, coming up uh, this weekend, uh, August 26th. We're going to be having a family fun day and soapbox races at H. Slavery South Community College. And so everybody is encouraged to come out and have a good time. For more information, you can call Roy Thomas at 541-1807, 541-1807. Uh, Carrie Spen at 541-7276, 541-7276. Lazarus Parsons at 443-9698. So that's Roy Thomas, 541-1807. Carrie Spen, 541-7276. Lazarus Parsons at 443-9698. This is the... So box races and family fun day at HLSCC the 26th. Uh, I think that's what this is a Saturday or Sunday. Let me. Um, what day is? What day is that? Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So that's Sunday the 26th at HLSCC. Don't don't miss it. You can catch spotlights. All the spotlights on JTVLive.net. 
uh, what you missed tonight, you could uh, see it there. And all those that you missed in the past, you could go back and you could take a, a look at them. There are some really interesting spotlights that we've had in the past with lots of information. You can catch up on all that information. I want to thank you very much for continuing to watch Spotlight. Thank you for your words of, your words of encouragement, your criticisms, your suggestions. Continue to email me at jtvspotlight at yahoo.com. I'm Edu Anchor reminding you that when the spotlight is on, you see the facts. Peace and blessings. Spotlight is brought to you by Bolo's High Tech Printery, Virgin Island Motors, and Clarence Thomas Limited.